retrofit in your reflector headlight housing. Step one. So the first step in any project is research. There's a good chance that somebody else out there has already done what you're trying to do. And maybe, if you're lucky enough, they've put a guide online, a write-up, maybe something on a forum, that's gonna save you a lot of time, aggravation, and most importantly, money. So step two, if you're pioneering a new retrofit and nobody else has done it before, you need to know what kind of dimensions you're working with. So grab whatever measuring tools you have. It can be rulers, you can have calipers, whatever you need. Get the dimensions of the housing that you're working with. Do your best to measure in the area and find out if the projectors that you plan on using are gonna fit. Two important dimensions to take into consideration are definitely the diameter of the projector that you're using. Make sure it fits within the reflector housing. And the second one is the depth of your housing. To measure the depth of your housing, you can use the depth gauge on your caliper, or you can maybe use uh, anything, anything you need to basically stick into the back of the housing through the bulb opening and measure the depth. You don't want a projector that's obviously gonna hit the front of your lens or that's gonna poke out the back. You might be able to make something work, but it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So again, know your dimensions and know the envelope that you're working within. In this next step, you'll be opening your headlight housings. So if you're lucky, your headlight housing is held together with some sort of adhesive glue that you can actually peel apart. But before you peel it apart, you're actually gonna have to heat it up. So what most people do in this step is they take their whole headlight housing and they actually put it in the oven. So you're gonna put it in your oven at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit for about five minutes. Then what you're gonna need is a prying tool or maybe a several of them. I would use flathead screwdrivers, some people have used kitchen knives, or like I said, a pry tool like this, and you're gonna work your way around the headlight housing and you're slowly gonna separate it. Now be very careful in this process. You're gonna probably wanna lay a towel down so you don't scratch your headlight lens. And like I said, you're gonna slowly work your way around the lens prying it open, opening it up, maybe even sticking some kitchen knives in there along the way to keep it from sealing back shut. You may have to put your headlight housing back in the oven for another five minutes to soften the glue again as you work your way around. Now, if you're unlucky, your headlight housing will actually be plastic welded uh, together. If your headlight housing is plastic welded together, your best friend is gonna be your Dremel tool. Grab your rotary tool, the little cutoff wheel, and you're gonna to have to cut your way around. It's probably gonna take you a good hour or so to do a headlight very carefully. Plan your cuts. If you plan to cut in the right places, then when you put the housing back together, you're gonna to have to use some sort of epoxy uh, glue in order to seal the headlight housing again, and you're gonna to wanna to leave yourself some, uh, some plastic to work with, like a flange, that you'll actually be able to, to clamp shut. Okay, so after you've opened your headlights, doesn't matter if you pry them open or cut them open, you're gonna to wanna to take a look inside and see what the inside construction looks like. In my particular case, I have this silver piece here which comes out of this back housing, which I already removed beforehand, and I'm left with two openings. I had a low beam and a high beam. The idea here is to fit the projector in my case, in the low beam opening. So what I had to do was I had to open up a hole large enough for the back threaded boss of my projector to fit through. For the Morimoto H1 headlight, at least in this version, it was about 7 eighths of an inch. So I took my drill and I drilled through and then I took a little grinding tool and ground the hole open just so there's a nice snug fit for the projector. The projector will then sit into place with the threaded portion through the hole. And on the back side, I had to cut off all of the previous provisions for mounting the bulb. So there were little brackets and nubs that I had to just slice off. You can use a rotary tool again, uh, like a little disc grinder. Or in my case, I used a belt sander. I was able to just take the whole assembly over to the belt sander, sand it down nice and flat, nice and smooth. You're gonna need a flat surface because on the back side you have a locking nut and a washer 
that's going to hold the projector into place. So you need a flat surface for these to be seated on. So before performing this next step, what some people do is because they no longer need the reflective surface of their old headlight housing, they paint them black or they paint them whatever color they choose, maybe the color of their car, to add a little more flair to the project. In my particular case, I kind of like the chrome look, so I'm going to leave that. Now what I'm going to need is the projector. I have this sort of a rubbery type of seal. I'm a washer and a lock washer. So the order in which I like to do this in is I actually put the seal on the inside. It kind of provides a rubbery, grippy surface for the projector to grip onto so that when we finally tighten it down in one of the last steps, it can't rotate. You're going to feed the wires through your hole. And actually you can even drill a second hole if it's really snug and just allow the wires to pass through. I'll try and do that now. And feed your projector through. Now you're going to want to make sure that you have it the right way up. The projector provides a cutoff line for your headlights, so you have to know the orientation. With the projector through and the threaded boss sticking out the back, I can then put the washer on and I can begin threading on the locking nut. You don't want to tighten it all the way, you just want it to be snug just to keep the projector in place for a little while before the aiming process later on. The projector in place, you can kind of get a good idea of how it's going to look in the final step. So with your projector snug into place, and again, only finger tight, not too tight, this is a good time to test the fit of your shroud that you purchased. Depending on the size of your headlight housing, you may need to trim the shroud to fit. So, I'm going to fit this one on here. It's a bit of a press fit. It goes on nice, and in my particular case, I'm lucky. I don't need to actually trim this. I've actually seen other people use this shroud in their retrofit swaps, and that's why I chose to purchase this one. No trimming required. In the case that you do need to trim it, trim a little bit at a time. Don't take too much off, because you can always take more material off, but you can't put it back on. So you want a nice clean look, and you don't want anything, any big gaps. So this next step is purely optional. I'm using a bi-xenon projector, and what that means is that this single projector takes care of both low beam and high beam functions. My headlight housing used to have a dedicated high beam housing area with a high beam bulb. Because I no longer need that, and if you don't need that, you can get creative and do something with that opening. What I ended up doing was buying some universal daytime running lights off of eBay and 3D printing my own housing for them. I fit them in the housing and then mount the housing to where the old high beam bulb used to be. It's going to give it a custom look and I'm going to create my own custom PCB that's going to take care of a sequencing function when I turn the car on. I'll show you that later. At this stage, before you move on to the wiring, you want to reassemble most of your headlight, but don't put the lens back on yet. You don't want to seal this just in case you have to make any fine adjustments with the components that you added to your headlight. So before installing your headlights back on the car, I like to actually take care of the wiring first. Now depending on which kind of projector that you went with, you're going to have different wiring options. In my case, I'm using a bi-xenon projector, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, this takes care of both high beam and low beam functions. Therefore, my wiring harness is actually going to be suited for this application. This wiring harness comes from the retrofit source, and it is their bi-xenon relay controller. Now this wiring harness has five major sections or parts. The first one being the relay. The second one being the plug that actually plugs into your stock harness. This is, is what's going to accept the signal for low beam or high beam function. This part here connects to the positive terminal on your battery. 
and then you have two of the same end connections. These end connections are going to power your ballast. The other one's going to go to your projector, and this is what's going to flip the shield on and off for the high beam function. And then you have a ground terminal, and it's the same on this second section. So the idea behind this uh, wiring harness is that on some vehicles, when you switch to high beam function, the low beam actually turns off. So if you were powering your projector strictly from your stock wiring harness, well, what happened is as you switch to high beams, you might get a signal to flip the, to flip the shield down on your projector. However, your low beam power is going to turn off and that's going to actually turn your ballast off. So when you switch to your high beams, the shield will activate, but your actual bulb will turn off and you won't end up with a high beam. This relay takes care of that. It actually keeps routing power to your ballast while activating your shield, so you get high beams. If your projector only has a low beam function, you have two wiring options. The first one is very simple. You can tap directly into the plug for your stock headlights, and th this is what previously powered the bulbs. Now, this can be done, however, you might have run into some problems with your lights flickering. If you have this problem, you may not be able to source enough power from the stock harness in order to power your HID kit. Your second option is to go with another relay kit. Now, it's going to be very similar to this, however, it's going to be slightly different in that it's not going to have plugs to activate any sort of a shutter or shield on your projectors because of course they don't have them, it's just strictly low beam. So that's going to be missing. However, it's going to have plugs to power your ballast, it's going to have a positive battery cable, it's going to have a negative battery terminal, and it's also going to have a plug that's going to tap into your stock plugs in order again to get the signal for on off on your headlights. And then of course it will have the relay body. Installing this wiring harness on your car is actually very very simple. It's just going to take a few simple hand tools and a little bit of your time. All of the wires are nicely labeled so you can't confuse where they go. And all you really need to do is find a nice convenient location to mount the actual relay. I suggest mounting it against a metal body. These things kind of tend to get a little bit hot and the metal on the frame will actually act as a heat sink and absorb some of that heat from this relay, extending its life. The rest of the wires come with a nice braided sheath and they can be routed throughout your engine bay and hidden out of sight. You might want to use some zip ties or cable ties to tie things down neatly out of the way. You don't want any of these wires rubbing on anything like an accessory belt. After partially reassembling your headlights, this is when you're going to park your vehicle on a level surface and reinstall them. At this point, you're going to turn your headlights on and check the beam pattern against a wall. Make sure your cutoff pattern is horizontal and make fine adjustments to your projectors as necessary. This is why we left the lenses off. Now you can reach the projectors and rotate them so that your cutoff pattern is perfectly horizontal. Once you've aligned your projectors such that they're perfectly level, this is when we're going to take a marker and we're going to mark a lining mark. This is going to allow us to line things back up in case the projector rotates again when we're tightening the nut in the next step. With the headlights back off your car, apply some Loctite to the threads here and use your timing marks to keep the projector aligned while you use a wrench and tighten this nut. Now it's time to reinstall your shrouds. I recommend mixing up some two-part epoxy and applying it to the outer edge of your projector before you install your shroud. Before the epoxy sets, rotate your shroud into the position that you want. Make any final adjustments before the glue dries. The shroud back in place, it's time to put the lens back on your headlight. We're going to be resealing our headlight housing with butyl windscreen sealant. Um, this comes in black color, it's a large roll.
and you're simply going to unravel the roll, stretch out the glue, and start packing it into the headlight uh, channel where the original sealant was. Work your way all around and then cut the last piece off and you're ready to reseal. When you put the lens back on, you're actually going to bake the headlight again at about 225 degrees Fahrenheit for about five minutes. That's going to soften up the glue. With your headlight out of the oven, press the two halves back together. Secure them with clamps and allow the glue to dry. If any parts are, are still a little difficult to press together, you can use a heat gun and work your way around the outer edges with the heat gun, applying heat to the glue. Again, use the clamps where you can and it'll help keep things sealed nice and tight. Once the glue is set, your headlights are ready to be reinstalled back into the car and the projectors are ready to be aimed. So now that you've reinstalled your headlights, there's a few measurements that you need to take before you can properly aim them. The first measurement that you're going to need is the height of your projector from, a, from the ground. So just grab a measuring tape, put it up beside your car, and figure out how high your projector is off the ground. That's the first measurement. The second measurement you're going to need is the distance between your two projectors. So again, with your tape measure, you're going to carefully measure the distance between both headlights. Record these measurements somewhere so you don't forget them. The next step is to find an area where you can actually aim your headlights. You're going to need a flat, level surface, and you're going to need a wall approximately 25 feet away from where you can park your vehicle. So you can see in front of me, I have an alleyway here. There's a piece of green tape here that marks the 25 foot distance from the wall. And in the distance, against the wall, you can see a piece of blue tape. Now I've marked that 21 inches off the ground because my projectors are 23 inches off the ground. So what you wanna do is you wanna line up a piece of tape approximately one and a half to two inches below the height of your projectors. So as you can see, with the headlights properly adjusted, the beam pattern should be perfectly horizontal and level. The distance between the steps and the cutoff pattern should be the same distance as the distance you measured earlier between the projectors, 